Okay. Hey, everyone. Star Trek Picard Season 1, Episode 6, The Impossible Box is over. But we're just getting started here on Live Long and Podcast. Let's talk about this episode. I'm David Mader, coming at you with Star Trek TV and movie reviews here on Live Long Podcast. I am joined today by two special guests. Let's uh, let's get them in here. Uh, in the bottom left corner of the screen, we have uh, my wife, Jane Mader. Say hello, Jane. Hello. And joining us for the first time this season, we have my brother, Rich. Uh, oh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Welcome. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to get into this show. Um, first off, welcome uh, and to Rich uh, for the uh, coming in on episode six. So um, I, I might, uh, if it's okay with you, Jane, I'm going to start with Rich. Uh, just kind of want to get your thoughts on this season so far and how you're liking the show overall. Uh, personally, I, I like the show. I think it's, um, I think it's really good if you're taking it in, like you're taking the mythos of what... Uh, TNG was, and this is basically the first taste you're getting back into that prime universe since 2002. So yeah. um, there's been a pretty big drought there. So, and let's be honest, over that span of time, everything's evolved. You know, from our own technology to uh, storytelling to production value, everything across the board. So I think uh, um, a lot of the gripes I hear are, you know. Uh, well, oh, it's not TNG. Well, TNG wasn't the original series and right. so on and so forth. It, it evolves, right? And um, I, I personally, I really like it. I'm not saying there aren't flaws in it. There mm -hmm. there certainly are flaws. Um, but uh, for the most part, for a season one of any show in Star Trek universe, as most people know, like you, you got but, bumps. <laughs> it's, be it's better than most, yeah, I'd say, uh, in terms of like a season one. Yeah, and uh, in terms of like it not being, um, I guess maybe what we consider tra the traditional Star Trek format, I just think yeah, you're right. Like uh, TV shows are a little different now. The expectations a little different now. And like what you saw with um, Seth MacFarlane and the Orville that he was trying, or he, I guess that show's still a thing, uh, although it's on long hiatus right now. But that show is very much the old Star Trek style, right? Like the TNG style. And it works kind of, but it's also, it feels kind of from another time in a lot of ways too, to me. Like it's, it doesn't quite fit into today. Um, and the, at least the way I'm used to seeing TV now. Jane, what do you think of that? Uh, about the Orville? Well, just in terms of like how the show yeah, is structured. Yeah, I, I definitely think about that, about uh, people complain about it's not TNG, but if, it, if they brought it back and it was exact same as TNG, people would have more problems, I think. So do I love the whole mystery, like the fast paced, I don't know, like I prefer episodic. I think I've said that many times, um, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm enjoying this Picard, this episode for sure, even more. Um, I'm excited for season two. I'm really, I'm so happy they've already committed to it because um, my mind keeps going, oh, what's going to happen? They can do this, this, this. So I'm excited. I'm in. Here, here's a question that I have to pose it to both of you. Would you prefer um, a season of 22 episodes? Like, I'm thinking more or less along the lines of, like, a Deep Space Nine. And you could also put it into the TNG and Voyager as well. But would you prefer that or 10 episodes of, like, meat or, you know, 22 episodes with, like, silly bottle episodes thrown in, in between where it's like, oh, take me out to the hollow suite and like you know let's play a game mm -hmm. of baseball They're like what the heck are we talking about here like yeah. it, it just it doesn't push the plot forward and it's kind of annoying and you're just like i remember back in the day you know when you would watch it on tv and you'd sit there and you go like oh i'm so disinterested in this now this is like a crusher romance episode yeah or... it's just like <laughs> what, what are we doing like we're filling the time and i guess it's good for certain aspects like you can you can expand character development and there's there's good things about it but you know in for the most part i'm just like this is just noise like i don't know well, i think with those uh, like for my perspective like those filler episodes those bottle episodes um i think what they mostly serve to do is is give you character development um, like I think when we had all of those Troy episodes or, you know, the, the, the um, whoever your least favorite character maybe is on the, uh, uh, in any series, whether for me, I guess in Voyager it probably was Harry Kim 
and uh, in Deep Space Nine, that's I racist. Think it was. No, it's <laughs> racist. Uh, and then Deep Space Nine, I guess it would have been a Jake. Um, you know, like yeah. when when like just like whatever uh, main character. They all used to. They used to all get a couple episodes every season with those like longer seasons with twenty two episodes or whatever, um, and so I guess we're missing that. Like we're not going to get like a Gerardi episode specifically. We're not going to get a specific Rios episode in this show. I don't think, at least not right away. No. Um, so, so I guess that that's the only downside. I think is we don't get to know these characters as much. But yeah, see you can't really have a, a character centric episode. It's, the trade-off there is, yeah, we don't have to watch boring, kind of nonsensical plot lines. But then again, where... some of those episodes, and you know, I'll eat my words to a certain extent, some of those episodes are really interesting. Like, if you think about, like, you know, uh, like, I'm thinking about the Voyager one where the Doctor goes, he's into the, f the future, and they think that, like, Voyager was a warship, and, like, that they were, like, these, like, horrible people, and he has to be like, no, like, and he becomes, like, the living historian or whatever. I'm like that. Yeah. That's interesting. It's totally off the in off on the tangent, but it was very interesting. Um, so, right. So that, that was one of the better ones, I thought. Um, but but there's like there's a bunch like that that they can do. Like uh, the the one um, another one on Voyager where again when they're playing with time a lot and uh, they're doing that whole slipstream thing and they're uh, yeah and and. Um, it's it's Chakotay and Kim and like they have to figure out how to like change time and then Jordy the oh, yeah. shows up on the Challenger and is like hey by the way I'm gonna blow you up wink wink <laughs> nice cameo on the right my job sorry <laughs> sorry pal sorry not sorry opportunity to explore different yeah. science fiction Do you, speaking of speaking of maybe filler episodes did did everyone pick up on the um the reference here this week uh. To a Voyager episode, which one specifically? on this one? Because um, when they so when they go into that um, the Queen cell at the near the end of the episode, yeah, and it's like that portal to that can that has the forty thousand uh, dollar forty thousand light, light year range. range. Yeah, um, they reference that they yeah that they had assimilated the technology from the Sakarians and the Sakar and I didn't remember them either. So I didn't remember uh, that, but I, I, I they were um, in a Voyager. So I'll show you. Uh oh. Could be choking up here. Oh, there it is. What? What happened? Uh, I don't know. Jane disconnected. Jane disconnected. Jane? She'll, she'll be back. Oh, that happened. Maybe I hope I didn't do something when I added the image. Don't worry. I think it's just the internet connection is a little weak right now. But we'll come back. Jane, are you okay? No, I'm okay. Go to continue. Continue. Yeah, I've got nothing. You got nothing right now? It's just the, I think the connection is really bad right yeah. at the moment. I only got three orange bars. So okay. Like even the the image won't even load into the screen. So, uh, oh, here it comes. I think it's coming back. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, so the uh, the reference we were um, alluding to was the Sakarians, which were I guess this fun loving race that we kind of met in like the first or second season of Voyager. Uh, that they were going to trade. I think it was replicator technology, or maybe it was holodeck technology, with the uh, Sakarians to get home faster. But this was like a prime directive violation. Anyways, I guess they got assimilated by the Borg sometime after we last saw them, and uh, so that's what le led to the technology getting incorporated here. Oh. Really, that seems so ridiculous that they'd be like, "Oh yeah, replicators." You know, I guess I think it was industrial replication, wasn't it? It was some. It was some kind of yeah. Maybe it was an industrial replicator, or it was just a simple replicator. But that was what, and then, but that was like a violation of Starfleet principles. So like, I think it was like a lot of the Maquis members. I think in particular Seska. So I guess it would have been before Seska, like revealed herself as a Cardassian. But um, so probably a first season episode. If I'm, yeah. Okay, I think Jane's coming back. Get her in here. There we go. You're back, Jane. I'm back. 
Okay, maybe I won't try to add an image in because I kind of bumped you out last time I tried that. Uh, can you just um, uh, say something so we can make sure we can hear you? Hello. I'm back. Okay, good. Good, good. Okay. So, yeah, just the. Do you remember the Sicarians, Jane? <laughs> You remember that episode of Voyager? Mm, no. No, she doesn't. Okay, let's talk about this episode. Okay. Um, Gerardi and Rios hooked up for some reason in this episode. What was that about? Limited options? <laughs> Jean? I'm giving up. You're giving up? Can you not hear me? Uh oh, I think Jane's annoyed. Okay, here. Well, it's you and me, Rich. So, mm. okay. Um, so, yeah. What was so limited options? I just thought that this was really odd. Um, I also want to comment on the fact that what is it like? So, Rios is a soccer enthusiast. Uh, I mean. I guess if soccer enthusiasm carries off into space, then yes. He was playing. He was playing footy uh, in 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 the transporter room, and he. I was like, this is a universe where baseball was too boring to survive. You know what's even more boring than baseball? Soccer. Uh, well, the Latin American community would disagree. I, well, hey, fair enough. I just like like what is that uh, in the in a future with all these um, advanced technologies? Hey, are you? Uh... Emma, it's not. Her, it's I. I my screen is just sitting there doing nothing. And I can hear you talking, but I. It's not working. There's not enough. It, it's almost like you know you guys could just share one camera. It's not like. Yeah, and one microphone. We could do that, Jane. Mm -hmm. We could just you could just come next to me. Sure. Okay. Why don't you bring a chair over? We'll share. Uh oh. <laughs> Fantastic production value we have. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it usually works better than this. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Let's get you. Okay. Yes. Oh. So yeah, soccer, Girardi. Um, Girardi. I don't know. Oh. Like you can't hear him now. Here, hold on. That, okay, Rich. Uh, that lady, uh, I like that actress. I like Alison Pill. I think she's she's fun, but I really don't like that character very much. I find her to be annoying. Well, she's <laughs> also uh, a villain. Yeah, a villain. But so like, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought she had like I I'm not a fan of the actress. Something about it just annoys me. But I thought she, it was great acting this uh, this episode from her. I was really, yeah, so you were was impressed. You, you were impressed with her. Uh huh. Yeah. That's I hate to say it. I don't want to be, but uh, yeah, I have to admit she's she's pretty good. So I just, just angle this camera a little bit differently. It's good. Fine. Um, there we go. We're both in. Okay. I, I feel like uh, also with her, Picard is a little. I don't know if it's a little too trusting too quickly, and like I guess you could say that about anybody except for like maybe Rafi. Mm -hmm. Like because he knows who that is, and he's like, okay, he but, knows what he can expect out of Rafi, but yeah, he doesn't know Gerardi from Adam. Yeah, like he knows, like you know, uh, what's his name, Elrond or what? Elnor, Elnor, Elrond's from Lord of the Rings, which he <laughs> might as well be. From I thought you were from thinking Elrond Hubbard from Scientology. <laughs> yeah, Elnor. Uh, so yeah, again with him, like it's like yeah, yeah, you know, like I've hung out with him a little bit, like, but. You know, I don't know what he is like today. And like, you see some of that where he's just like, nope, I'm going to kill everybody. And he's like, don't do that. You know, but, uh, you know, with her, <laughs> like, he met her like a couple days ago, essentially. And it's now just like, yeah, you're on the team. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Rios, he doesn't know Rios other than that, um, that Rafi's more vouched for Rios. Yes, right. So at least there's like some kind of like continuity that makes sense there. Like, it, like you can logically say like, okay, from point A to point B, like it, it makes sense. But the second that Girardi shows up, even in that the what is it, the third episode where yeah. she shoots those Romulans, I'm just yeah. like, 
Mm-hmm. Where do you get that disruptor? Like, well, she's trying to go floor, I think, but yeah, but like, I don't know. It was very, yeah. It was more like suspect the way she did it, and the way that she seemed. She acted like, uh, like, you could tell she was playing coy, I suppose. And it, like we all kind of saw it coming that she was either some kind of a a plant or some kind of a like defector, or maybe she was somebody. In, she was Gerardi, uh or somebody disguised as Gerardi, but turns out it's her. Actually, yeah. And you can see that she's got these demons. Like she, uh, so Killing Maddox has pushed her into the into the arms of Rios, I suppose. Um, yeah, I think there's more going on with Rios than we're shown at the moment. I think there's a lot more depth. And so, I don't know if this is even him trying to ensnare her, trap her, and he knows something's wrong with her. That's my, what I think we're gonna go. Like, I why, think he's why just... are they hooking up? There's got to be a reason. Like. Where is this going? Where is this going? Why are they doing this? I think Rios has a plan. Maybe. I, Rios just seems like Mr. PTSD, kind of like, I'm going to shut myself out, kind of. What did you say in this episode? I've never hooked up with a Star Trek captain. captain. He's like, I recommend it. Uh, no, nah, she said a captain. I don't think captain. he was ever a captain in Starfleet. I think he was like a, a commander, captain. right? A no. captain of anything. Yeah, they said he was a first officer um, on a ship that got kind of like classified and erased from... From history, and something yeah. happened. To his ca- something violent happened to his captain. I think. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. and then he, so he dropped out of the service for some reason after that, or because of that, I guess. Yeah. But what, what the details are are still fuzzy. Um, yeah. So they're kind of. I guess maybe they're both wounded people. They're both kind of broken people in some way. I guess everyone on this cast or this crew kind of is. They all. They're all damaged people in some way or another. So yeah, that was something else I wanted to kind of bring up, which was like. If you if you compare them point for point to like the TNG cast, everybody's a mess. But like in the TNG cast, like really nobody was a mess. Right, they were all very put together. They were all very professional. They're all professional, very like matter of fact. Like you know, they had quirks, but mm-hmm. like, uh, but this is like almost the polar opposite to that, which is like we're all disaster shows and we all drink like fish and you know like <laughs> just to our next headline which yeah. was Rafi um Rafi's really good at her job even when she's loaded um you know she was obviously uh you know coming off of this this um this thing with her son this this uh, somewhat uncomfortable she's on, a bender. she's on a bender right now you know but she comes they pull her out of her of her room and uh, they get her to call this captain to give them clearance to the board cube because that's where they're headed, and they can't go there without like some kind of permission or they're gonna like violate treaties and everything else. But yeah, so like speaking to the fact that everyone in this crew is a little bit damaged, and uh, and and Rafi's no no different. She's maybe the most damaged overtly of all of them. I thought didn't you find like. Picard a little cold. Like if we were on the Enterprise and one of his like people were drunk, like he wasn't caring for her. Like he just seemed, seemed really uncaring. For maybe he's just over it. Like with maybe, her. Yeah. maybe he's, he's just, just aware doing. that yeah, like this is how she copes. And you also have to remember too that it's just like if if I'm the captain of a ship, I'm responsible for you. Whereas in this case, he's a passenger, not. A, like the leader mm-hmm. like he is but he isn't like it's he's not responsible um so yeah and you've never really seen him in this situation so to say like well he wouldn't have behaved like this because he's mr joe starfleet and like this is how he mm-hmm. behaves because it's all protocol and it's all this well protocol's out the window now so it's like okay now yeah. now how do you react in this situation yeah he comes to check on her. He's glad that she's there, but like, yeah, the, the, their relationship is a little bit interesting because, because to me, like, he mostly uses Rafi um, to get what he wants, mm-hmm. but he doesn't seem to really care about her. No, yeah, right, yeah. So I, I guess you're right. This is not Captain Picard. This is Picard. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting to know Picard, retired more. Admiral Picard. Yeah, undamaged. Damage Picard. Damage Picard with damage Raffi, damage Rios, damage Gerardi, and damaged Elnor. Uh, <laughs> so they're all damaged. Well, I feel like you don't really know Elnor yet. I can't. Well, he's very eager to cut people's heads off. 
I don't know if he's that damaged per se. Elnor, like yeah. he's just he's more secluded. He's he, well, he kind of was abandoned by Picard, and he, you know he's a yeah, but Picard world. wasn't his dad. Like it's like yeah, like he still had kin, like essentially, right? Like he had the the group of ladies or whatever, but like it. Yeah, like he was just the guy who was visiting. Like it's like it's almost like your 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 godfather or something like that. Like you know you, you might not see him very often, but like you still have a relationship with him, right? Which so I think why he ultimately goes with him. But yeah, he's a little bitter that he never came back, right? Which whatever, I mean, sure, but uh, yeah, Anyways. yeah. I just think uh, so. These scenes we're getting with Rafi, I'm, I am enjoying them. Um, with her like being able to work the system, basically, she's like she's there for whatever the plot needs her to be, like wherever they need to go and do next. She's the setup for that, I find. Mm -hmm. Um, like we need to get into this planet, we have to get by this security thing, we have to do this. And Rafi's her job, her role in this show is always to make that happen somehow, mm -hmm. whatever, and they can make it whatever it is. So sometimes I find it. I want to see her like run into a thing where she can't do something mm. or she she you know she's not as connected but right now they're showing her as very capable and very competent even when she's completely she's not. like a russian novelist she's she's like like, <laughs> like just like plastered all the time but like writing beautiful like novels that are tragic <laughs> and like it's just like oh okay it's like that's who you are you're the russian novelist of the crew Exactly. You're gonna eventually commit suicide. <laughs> yeah, she's tragic. She's a tragic character. Or cut your ear off. That was Van Gogh, but like whatever. You get the point. Um, yeah, I get it. But um, yes, just you know, going. So they get they they get through everything, and they get the clearance to go to the board cube, and then you know, um, Picard Picard was very um, apprehensive. Um, with the with going there, like as we understand, like so he's saying that this is the first time he's going back to a board cube since Best of Both Worlds, mm -hmm. and I guess you know he also uh, obviously first contact that movie, I guess was on his own ship, his own ship getting assimilated, so it wasn't exactly the same. But I thought that this was really interesting, like him going back to being on the board ship and how that was affecting him. Um, and and our headline here was you know Hugh did a real solid right because. Um, you know, basically Picard gets to the Borg ship and he was like, whatever you want, man. Like you, you saved me uh, a long time ago, whatever you're here for, wh I, whatever it is, I'm, I'm on board, which I thought was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like somebody who he didn't have to jump over hoops to, to get to join him. Essentially. Right. I thought I wasn't really sure what we were going to get out of this reunion between Hugh and Picard, because I guess the last time we saw Hugh, you know, he was um, before this show, he was, he was going with those the free uh, board the free board that were had been following lore for some lore. time mm -hmm. and they you know they seemed like they were he was a little bitter at what uh the enterprise had done by giving him his individuality because it, that spread to a number of other drones who then didn't know how to function didn't know how to care for themselves a lot of them died and starved to death so i wasn't quite sure what how hugh this was going to go but it seems like that kind of is no longer a grudge or no longer an issue from Hugh. He's mm -hmm. just happy he's free. I wonder if Hugh and Jordy are friends right now. I wonder, because they were closer, right? They were closer, and Jordy was his friend, so I wonder if they've hooked up. Mm -hmm. Chatted. Jordy's still alive. I think we confirmed that. They, they basically allude that Jordy's still, still alive. They allude, yeah. yeah, that a lot of people are still alive. Jordy, Worf, and Riker were mentioned by name. Mm -hmm. um, um, this is a total aside tangent, but uh, did you see that it was basically uh, as confirmed as you can get that Worf took over the Enterprise captaincy? Yes. Yeah. That yeah. the prequel book saying that, yeah, after Picard leaves, so, so Worf became the first officer after the events of Nemesis. Yeah. And that eventually when Picard cho chose to leave the Enterprise to, to become the um, the Admiral of the Rescue Fleet, the Ferry, Worf, yeah. Worf became captain oh. of the Enterprise. And we don't really know what happened to the Enterprise after that point. I would assume it's still booting around or it's probably going in for a retrofit or something like that. But like... Yeah, it'd be like a 30-year-old ship almost at this point. Twenty five. Yeah, years. so you'd have to think like how long did the Enterprise last, right? Like... the Well, the original... Like Kirk's Enterprise was in service for... 
Like, well, it was it was already a ship for 20 years before Kirk even took command of it. And then um, it was around for another 20 years. I mean, years. I would say, what's the, what's the general lifespan of a, a starship, right? Like, you know. Um, it, it seemed to be. It seems to be shorter in the 24th century. It seems like they go through their ships a little faster. But it seems like, like refrigerators from like, like refrigerator. the 40s to like today. Yeah, like what? What did they like? I guess like in the in the in the 23rd century, like the ships seem to be in service for decades, and then they were the technology was advancing more, and so like there was Voyager, there was the Sovereign class. It seemed like there was a new cool ship every couple of years in in their time mm. i know you love ships <laughs> i'm not a ship expert but like you look at like the apparently like the uh the enterprise f as it were to be uh i, I believe in star trek online they have an enterprise f yeah they and do. it's uh it's an odyssey class i believe it's called i think so yeah, yeah. i don't know who's the captain of it though <sighs> yeah i don't know either um but uh i mean You'd have to think that would be in the ballpark of right now. Like that, that'd be like, you know, well, maybe yeah, within pretty... ten years or something like that. I would love to see where the Enterprise is at. What if Worf became the captain? I, you know, I would love even to see some of those adventures. Like, you know, what like they were talked about a Captain Worf show for years. It never came to mm -hmm. fruition. But I feel like, yeah. While Worf is like beloved, like he's too volatile to be in that top role. I don't know. Right. Like he always Which might be interesting, good. but uh, he would like, make a good second in command, but him as a captain, I don't know. There was times he was in command that um, worked out. There was also that time he killed, uh, he almost killed the that ship of civilians and he got put on court martial on D Space Nine. Uh, or that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a huge Klingon lover. Um, so I don't, I wouldn't look, be looking for a Worf captain show myself i know i, I don't, I don't want to that uh, klingons are fine they probably ask people like you jane and that's why we never got it <laughs> they, they like, sure they but the thing that i was thinking of right like when i when i found out that wharf became captain i was just like it wouldn't work like that at all like you wouldn't go like okay picard leaves therefore next man up like in some cases you might do that i felt like Riker was a good choice if like Picard got assimilated mm -hmm. right back in the day because Riker had the experience and the pedigree and all that. And not that Worf doesn't. And they were but, trying to give Riker a ship for a long time. They were trying, and to, they're trying to give him a ship for a long time. So they're like, we know you can do this, but like, you're just not pulling the trigger. Right. But like with Worf, they actually had a lot of reservations. And then, you know, like basically it was like Picard who convinces them like, no, no, he's the guy. And sure. He could do the job. I'm not saying he can't do the job. But it's your flagship. Like, you're not just going to go like, all right, give it to the next guy up. Like, you're going to go like, okay, who makes the most sense? Like, that Jellico guy when they when yeah. they take Picard out. You're not even that he was the right choice, but they're like, he has experience with the Cardassians. That's why he's important for this role. Right. So it was a um, Starfleet Admiral role, and you have all these like people on staff, all these different people of different qualifications. You're right. Like that's how like the military works. They don't just yeah. assign the next uh, person in line on a ship. But I think that's for the sake of like storytelling. That's how we kind of we kind of yeah, like. I, I agree. It's it's based on storytelling, but it's not based on. There's, this, it's there's a deleted reality. scene in Nemesis where after Data dies because he was supposed to be the first officer, that yeah. um, that this other first officer shows up. To yep. Take, well, take, it was in the deleted scene. Yeah. The deleted scene. I was like, why would you give it to this guy? Like, Worf should get the is next in line. But uh, and I guess maybe my reaction was shared by others because now they they put this into the they retconned it so it didn't exist. But um, what do you think about that though? Like, would like what was Worf doing like in his career at that time? He was there for the wedding. Yeah, and he was in a Starfleet uniform. Yeah, so he's there, but like he's still like basically assigned to Deep Space Nine. No, he had left Deep Space Nine. Right? He was uh, actually supposed to be an ambassador to uh, the Klingon Empire, right? To the Klingon Empire, uh, he was supposed to be living with Martok and hunting Targs, and that was <laughs> that was how Deep Space Nine had left things. But then Nemesis came a couple of years later, and Gowron. they were like, oh, we're, we're, not gonna, "We're not going to explain this. He's just he's back, and he's part. He's." He's with this crew. He wants his movie check. So, you know, he's here. Um, 
but yeah, I'd like to kind of get more into that. And like, even with these books that are supposed to be canon, I take it with They're a grain like of salt. Pseudo canon. It's pseudo canon because they had this whole countdown comic series where uh, years ago that mm -hmm. was tied in with the J.J. Abrams 2009 movie that was um, supposedly canon, right? And it had uh, Data uh, before having become Data, having assert Data having asserted his personality. So Data basically was resurrected in B4's body, mm -hmm. and he went on to become captain of the Enterprise. But that didn't happen, mm -hmm. so that's been erased. So so I think that, like, yes, they have this book, and I think we can kind of loosely take it as um, what happened for now, but I think if, if the writers, you know, decide to change something with that, they will. Uh, um, I, until it's on screen, it doesn't count, I don't think, fully. Well, speaking, speaking of canon and all this kind of good stuff, um, what's interesting, is that you have like basically the entire theme of this show is since Romulan's Borg, right? Um, mm -hmm. You have that court case with Measure of a Man, right? And you basically have like the judge advocate agreeing, saying, "Hey, no, Data's a person." But now all of a sudden, uh, Data's dead. Like you, what you throw all that out the window? Right, like now all these synths are basically slaves, even though they are sentient. Like, yeah, they're they're not really sentient. Uh, they're not really. I guess they're more just like worker bees, right? Like they're automatons. Um, yeah, with some basic subroutines, which I don't really get either, because if they can create holograms that are super sophisticated and can talk and you know, and so think and do this into a, like, yeah. an artificial body, like yeah. it doesn't quite make sense to me. Um, yeah, that you would have one and not the other, like right. Yeah, like it's just software, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know. But I guess the positronic brain and whatever. Well, I think it, the difference would be is that you could have like a rogue robot run away and go do something, whereas like a hologram is is contained to a certain area. Unless you have a mobile emitter, like which doesn't about. exist yet. But like there was only one of those. There's only one. Yeah. Could ever yeah. ever ever recreate that it was from like 500 years in the future yeah, yeah. Maybe so they did they maybe, maybe they maybe, did maybe when that happens then it's a different story but like for the most part yeah you need to have like all these basically like apparently hollow emitters became like like smart home it's like everybody's <laughs> got it now and like you can just put it on your ship and it's cool at least on rios's ship they do um yeah, yeah he's the whole the whole ship is a big holodeck yeah which is awesome yeah, like we were talking about this the other night, where it was just like, oh yeah, like you have this one guy who's playing like all these different characters in the crew, and it's like hilarious because he he shows up, and then this guy's a little flamboyant, and this guy's like a grunge guitarist from like Seattle who yeah. speaks Portuguese, and like then there's this other guy who's kind of like whatever, uh, like there's the Irish guy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think that's from, great. Uh, the actor, he's. You know, he grew up all over the world, and so he can do all these different yeah. accents. So, you know, he's um he's an Hispanic, um, he's of Hispanic like origin, but he yeah he grew up in Ireland, England, uh, different parts of the states. So he can kind of do whatever. So that's they've incorporated that into his character or into this like hologram version of him. And do you think that John yeah. Girardi got in there and deleted um, the knowledge of her having a mental breakdown? That one of the the hologram saw that and was questioning her. Like, will that come back that the image knows uh, uh, what happened? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think so. Um, yeah, you... probably. Like, it would be interesting if she didn't. Like, she is the leading expert on artificial life. I imagine she knows how to hack an EMH, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know for sure. So You'd it's have worth... to think it's pretty similar. Like, it'd be like working, like, in, like, my own world. I've come from the graphics world, so, like, using Corel versus Photoshop. Like it would be very similar, but like a little different. So like you'd have to imagine she has some skill to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but just uh, get back to the, like the, in, in the episode with Hugh and this, all this Borg stuff, um, like the fact that, so he mentions he's a Federation citizen, so he can leave whenever he wants, but all these other liberated drones, um, I guess cannot like they, they're, they're stuck on the artifact. Is that what we're led to sort of believe, or they can't go anywhere? They can't go to the Federation. I'm not sure. Like, wh who has domain over them? Right. Like, what happens? Like, if I'm a if I'm a 
Federation citizen before I get, and then I get assimilated, like I'm a Jean Luc Picard. Yeah, there's when you become Borg, does that eliminate your citizenship? <laughs> I don't think so, but like maybe if you were from some species from the Delta yeah. Quadrant, and now you're suddenly a liberal, you have your your man without a country kind of essentially. Yeah, your man without a country. So, so that I get the impression, yeah, that the and they say that the XBs, that's their term for the the form of Borg. They're sort of like the pariahs of the galaxy. No one likes them. They they see them as monsters and. Picard says to Hugh that you know you're you're doing great work here. You're that they're victims, really. That which they're would be obvious to me, but I guess they're veterans, right? Like they're the veterans of like our mm -hmm. day, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you know, right. well, these people have been through a lot. Uh, yeah. yeah, kind of yeah. you know PTSD, like all messed up, you know, deformed, and then like a lot of people not really doing anything for them. Borg, like Picard was what a Borg for maybe a week. You know, like if not, that, if, if, if that, days. two, yeah, a couple days. It wasn't a Which long period of time, and he probably it, why he didn't have any scars from it, other than like mental scars, right? Right. Well, yeah, we see no like external evidence of his assimilation ever. Yeah. Um, whereas a lot of these people, yeah, like they're they have pieces of their um, implants still showing through. They're you know they have they've lost their eyes or limbs in a lot of cases. And the Romulans, for whatever reason, are, are choosing to help. Like, is this like, not a no, They have their own agenda, of course. They, they want the technology. Yeah. So this is a spe like, okay, what, what, what did they say? That this is Romulan space, the Borg artifact is there, but there is this science module thing working there. And that's who Picard. the Borg. The Borg reclamation project within this cube is a independent operation of something it's kind. almost like the un kind of like it's like we're we're our own thing we're like a city state like you, you we have our own laws and own kind of regulations you don't control us but we're here yeah, we're a, we're an independent thing we're yeah. not part of the romulan delegation is probably the better way to look at it right and that's why so that's why he as a federation citizen can be the director of it mm -hmm. versus it having to be a romulan why are the romulans allowing this but, what's the like um, I guess so oh, that they can, hmm? what are the Romulans getting out of it? Uh, I guess that they can they take that technology that those, those parts that are uh, harvested from the Borgs mm -hmm. and then they can sell that or whatever. They're probably reverse engineering it to do something, trying yeah. to build new technologies. Because like when they talk about like, you know, they're they're going to the cube and they're talking about like, you know, the former neutral zone. So they, they allude there like the neutral zone's gone. Like, which makes sense, but like, they're actually kind of essentially confirming it, but it's still kind of there, like in a weird way. And like, it's not claimed space. It's just, yeah, nothing now. They're basically just this fractured people. And that, that goes into what seven of nine was saying and like what she's doing with those Rangers and like, you know, they're flying around, they're doing, they're basically trying to keep the peace. It's kind of the wild west. Wild there. west is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. So well, Hugh said to Picard when he got there about um, Narek that he showed up two weeks ago. Pretending not to ask questions. And, and and Hugh knew he was a spy. Like this Romulan spy shows up two weeks ago and starts dating Soji. Is that kind of yeah. how it went? Right. So, so he knew he was kind of uh, shifty right off the yeah. bat. Yes. He didn't I, seem to warn Soji about this, though. If I was in that position, I'd be like, fucking everybody's sh shifty. Mm -hmm. Every Romulan here is shifty. Yeah, like everyone's shifty. Like, like, give me a break. Like, yeah, <laughs> there's not one person here you can trust. Yeah, and like, just why? Like, the reason we're here on this board cube at all is because Soji's here, mm -hmm. and and she was sent here to find the truth about why the synths were bad. I don't. Yes. And now she's off the board cube, so I don't think she has found any truth. If anything, she all she did was put herself in danger. And wait. So you think Soji was there to figure out something about this? That's sense? what they said in the last episode mm -hmm. was that the two sisters were sent to these places uh, respectively by Maddox to find the truth, to help to uncover the truth mm -hmm. about who, why, why the synths got banned. So effectively why those um, those synths on Mars did what they did. And mm -hmm. behind it. Who's behind but, it. But uh, you mean un basically unwittingly, like they don't. Yeah, that they're sort of like they're, they were both sleeper uh, agents of, of sort, right. and yeah, they were sent there. And so, uh, so that's they, they said, and Rafi says it in this episode. Why haven't they killed her? 
right? Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't make sense like, unless they need her for something, which is of course to find out where the home world is. Mm -hmm. So that's why they haven't killed her because they know what she looks like, but she didn't find anything else. In this episode, she's just discovering she's only three years old or all her stuff is three years old. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, this, okay, but is just Maddox not a very smart person? Uh, he clearly <laughs> is because he can invent artificial life, but well, well, we don't know that. Like, we're just seeing it from her perspective. Maybe, like, uh, part of the day she was doing research that she didn't know about, we don't know about, and then she reconnected and uploaded, like, um, on her spare time that we weren't seeing that she doesn't remember that she was doing research. Maybe. Well, it, well, even in this episode, her her AI mother calls her mm -hmm. and, like, basically saying, how did you get some sleep? Which seems to be, like, yeah. triggering something. And maybe like maybe there's stuff we're not seeing where Soji's going into Manchurian candidate mode and is hacking all the board computers and yep. finding all this information out and then she forgets it all. She forgets. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. And but. that's why she knows so much. She's like, I didn't know that. How did I figure that out? Like, how did I know about this or that? This or that? Because on her spare time, she is hacking stuff. So I think that. So that will pay off eventually. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. I mean. What's okay, and and like I'm kind of jumping ahead here a little bit, but like, um, when they talk about or when they they put her in that room, that Romulan room, oh, that was right, right. yeah, and uh, Nerica Swords she tried to kill Suji with the Romulan Rubik's cube, <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, they throw her into that room, and like the the red mist starts coming out, and. Well, first he first he takes her on this dreamscape. Yeah, like the, the let's the walk dream, around the room, and this is how. Walk, yeah, yeah, right, and um, whatever, and then he tries to kill her with the red mist. But okay, then she activates, quote unquote, activates. But she's a human. She's an like organic. even she's organic, but she's technically still a human, right? Right. She's but, okay. Of sure. But like you are made of flesh and blood and bone, correct? Right. Yeah, correct. How are you punching through the hull of a Borg cube? It's not clear. Like even even in the la when we saw Dodge before she got killed. And she was like running like extreme like a gazelle. Yeah. And she you're just like okay she more than um than a human can, even though she's not made of anything different. Uh, yeah. But I get you know her super advanced brain can activate and I guess use her what the full potential of human ability I guess I guess yeah right yeah that's it's a bit of a stretch but whatever I mean that's just a minor gripe essentially I'm just kind of like uh, I mean, why can't you punch through a floor it doesn't make sense to me yeah. but I'm not gonna sit here and you I'm know, trying to remember the Cylons the human Cylons flesh and blood Cylons, on Battlestar on Battlestar Galactica. Um, did they have any? They did. Yeah, they, they did. They were superhuman. They were they were stronger than more normal humans. Mm -hmm. Um, not like crazy stronger, but mm -hmm. but they they would um, they would beat you in a fight. Mm -hmm. They they were just a little stronger, a little better. Mm -hmm. But they but they were susceptible to all the um, weaknesses. All weaknesses. So I was wondering, um, was she was that red mist going to kill her? Like or? Did, do you he, think maybe they built in Ner something? Yeah, Nerik basically, or what is it? Nerik, right? Well, that's his, that's yeah. his, that's his, not yeah. his true name. Oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. His lover name. <laughs> his lover name, whatever that yeah. was. Um, Reum, I think he says it is. It's my, my real name is Reum. Or... Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Uh, then, then he kills but, but yeah, that red right. mist comes out, and then the guy is just like, sees. Caesar starting to beat through the floor, and then goes like, oh, I'm going to open it. He's like, no, the radiation. So I guess they're. They're gonna try and kill her with radiation. Maybe um, it was like a Thaleron thing, like that um, uh, that thing that the thing in Nemesis. Yeah, maybe I don't know. It was. Yeah, it seems like that was something he else. Was like, doo, 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 my impossible box. Because uh, earlier in the episode, when he's talking to his sister, like just a little green weirdo thing came out, and then this I'll time, figure. I'll yeah. figure. But yeah, then it came out this red this red mist that was, I guess, radiation or mm -hmm. something to kill her. But it didn't yeah. work. She punched through the floor, and then she yeah, she got out. She got out. Um, I'm I'm glad that we are done with the wrong. I hope we're done with the Narek and Soji. Um, I don't th that he's got to be my least favorite character. Is he a main Narek. character on this show? 
I don't know, but like, if you're looking for flaws in the show, like, get rid of this guy. And like, he, ever since he first showed up, it was just like, he's just like, hey, I'm impulsively pretty. And I'm like, you're not. What the? <laughs> what's going on here? Right? And then he's just like, who are you? You want to go dance? I'm damaged. I, I heard you fix damaged right. people. Yeah. yeah. And then she's like, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, like, what is going on? And then we're not, like, episode, they're waking up in bed together. Yeah, and then you uh, think about it, and you're like, this is basically how real life works, so I don't know why I'm complaining. It's <laughs> like, you know, like, you go to a bar, and you're like, oh, my God, you're so fabulous. I know, right? You want to get out of here? Right? But, uh, yeah. Ooh, they baked it into the show from the beginning. Like, we're going to make this a sexier Star he's, Trek. He's got some sex appeal. Yeah. Uh, I see it. Oh, Jane. <laughs> Uh, he does. He, he does. He looks like he looks he so. Does. He looks like a vampire. I know. There, but there's, yeah. There's something there. there. I get it. When he's like, uh, yeah, he's just like, can you keep a secret? And then she's like, yeah. And then he's like, so can I. <laughs> I can't keep an appointment with an orthodontist. <laughs> and then runs away. I was checking. I think you said that the other night, and I was checking out his teeth in this episode. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Teeth? Oh, they're not good. We're just Romulans, you know, suffer from. And then you got a sister who's like kind of like this like domineering kind of like character. And yeah, then, she's very one note for me. Um, yeah, just typical bad guy. Rom yeah, like I'm gonna dress all in black and say nefarious things. I get yeah. you know at least he's a bit more nuanced in that he seems to be a little bit conflicted. Um, well, I think he actually cares, right? But whereas like his sister's just like. Eh. Because he's like, you know, he, he gets the information out of her and he's like, you know what, you were never real. Um, but you can tell he's like sort of he's not quite hundred percent. He was he, he has some regrets about this. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, was, I, I mean, I this will probably be revealed later, but like I don't really get what their whole stigma against. Like, it's just like, okay, we hate them. It's like it's kind of like, um, and this is probably a very, might be a controversial thing to say, but like, it's it's like the KKK going to Africa to kill everybody. It's like, I don't know why you care. Mm -hmm. Like, um, Explain what you mean by that. I, yeah, like, because like, she's like, oh, we need to find the synth homeworld so we can go there and kill them all. Oh, all right, right, right. And it's just like, okay, but what? Why? Like, don't you have bigger problems? Like, I, I don't, I don't get it. Um, well, there's something maybe, we don't know. There's something. Yeah, there's stuff that we don't know, and like when they refer to her as the destroyer and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So like, there's there's more to it that we don't have, and this is where you know this whole episodic arc, ten episode arc, kind of falls short, and which is where why I think they should have released it as like a ten episode, like just throw it all out there, whereas as opposed to the week by week, because it's just like wait, uh, okay, like I guess I wait another week and figure it out, and then and then. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just think. But then again, it's CBS, and CBS are a bunch of donkeys. Well, and I don't. Yeah, you know, we've been saying for a couple weeks now that it seems like it's tied in with. Um, it might be tied in with Discovery and uh, that the whole control plot line of that. See, I don't know if you're caught up on all that, but oh, I've watched it. Yeah, like that. That. that, that I think they're gonna dump that season and be like. We don't want to talk about this anymore. I hope so. I hope, so. I hope they're not trying to connect. Other it. than what they have to talk about. That this is because that that plot line was very much about artificial intelligence sort of going awry, and yeah. and it seems like that's what's also happening here. That the Romulans know something that artificial intelligence is going to be the undoing of all life everywhere, mm -hmm. which was similar to the to that discovery. Yeah, very plot line. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, like why do this again? Yeah. Um, and and it, it's never I don't get it. It's like it's very much like Skynet. It's very much like um, just typical like machines will eventually turn against us. And, and why keep it a secret? Like why like the the star doctor or the doctor oh oh showed Girardi something, but why? And it, it was compelling enough for her to kill. Maddox. Then why not show everybody? Why not show everybody? Why is it a secret if if, if they're gonna kill yeah. everybody? Then kill yeah, everyone. They... Then it, I think everyone will get behind this. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. if, if if it's really if that is the case, which I hope it's not. Um, then yeah, yeah. I'm sure, like I said, we'll find out the next 
three episodes. We're, this is six. This is episode six. Five. Four. We got seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's four, oh. four left. Four left. Okay. Is this six? Yeah, it was six, right? This was six. six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. Okay, what was the next headline? Um, oh, it wasn't um, it wasn't Eric. Okay, well, I think that the my my next thing was uh, kind of like as uh, after all that. Um, oh, sorry. You know what I think the problem with Narek is? Is that his name is an anagram for Karen, like Karen in the office, like Karen. Stop. Like <laughs> he's the Karen of the show. Who is? You don't. Narek Narek is? Yeah. Yeah, he's the Karen of the show. Yeah, Karen, that's the one that Jim dated when he went to the other office. What is? But isn't isn't? No, Eric I'm just saying, like in general, like Karen from accounting, like Karen who's always kind of like, oh, Karen, uh, like you know. But isn't Narek an anagram for Karen? Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Karen. Yeah, sure. he's the Karen of the show. Right. Um, well, after he tries to kill her with the Rubik's cube, Karen Narek, and then. Uh, she punches her way through the floor. She's finally kind of brought together with Picard, like sort of like you're kind of like, are these two got to get together? And he's just like, come with me if you want to live, basically. Uh, gives her that, like, please trust me, come with me. And you're like, okay, yes. And and I guess Elnor had snuck along at some point, right? And so mm -hmm. well, he kind of, they all they all retreat to the queen cell, which I thought was a kind of an interesting concept, something that's kind of a new. Well, it's like a beehive. Right, like yeah. So it kind of makes sense, right? That there would be yeah. one, and and um, but the one thing I couldn't figure out was why Elnor couldn't go through the portal with them. Yeah, didn't get that. Didn't get, understand that at all. Why not just go? Why why stick around and for get yourself killed? They kind of say like at the end, like, well, this we have to like keep them lo away long enough so that this room will be hidden again to wipe wipe the data of where they went. Yeah, yeah, I guess, but like it didn't. Like, it seemed like Hugh could have handled that on his own without uh, Elnor. I, I don't know. Maybe Elnor just wanted to fight. Yeah. Didn't really make a lot of sense. He's just like, "Come on, come on!" Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, go, go." go. <laughs> but no. no. Um. Yeah, like where are they going? So they say, "Okay, this thing has a forty thousand light year range," mm -hmm. and he calls Rios. And he's like, "Meet me on." Well, whatever the whatever the name is, that probably. Um, the That's name of the next it. episode is called. Did you guys watch the the preview for the next episode? No. Well, I see Riker at the end of it. Yeah, I thought I, I wouldn't say there was anything great. Like it just looks like it just continues. But yeah, we. It, get, my right. guess would be Beta Z. Wait, they didn't say Beta Z. They said, well, it could be something close to that. It's called Nepenthe. Nepenthe. Um, Nepenthe, home to the old, old trusted friends, which I guess is Riker and Troy. Mm. So, at the rest of this, let's ring career try to join them. Picard and help Soji. So, yeah, it's gonna be like a lot of like, and, and then so meanwhile, Hugh and Elnor are left on the board cube and must face an angered Narissa, which yeah. is his sister. Um, okay, so, 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 so that's where so Picard's mind is like, okay, I'm gonna take Soji to Riker because I know I can trust Riker. Uh -huh. um, and that's forty thousand light years is a is a large range. Um, that's because if you, Voyager was seventy thousand light years away, uh -huh. and they were seventy years away, so it's it takes what ten years to traverse ten thousand light years, but at least it used to. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, I, it depends what you're looking at in terms of the canon, you know. Well, I'm going off that. Um, well, if you look but, at like my biggest gripe with uh, Into Darkness is when they're at the Klingon border, and then two minutes later, they're at the moon. Mm. Uh, in, at the end movie? of the movie. In which movie? Into yeah. Darkness. So remember oh. when they're being chased by the Dreadnought? They're sitting at the, the, the Klingon neutral zone, yeah. and then they start to fly away. Like If you time it, it's like two minutes from when they, they, they go from there to there. And I'm just like, well, this is the case. That's a, And then my, I remember, this guy I work with, he was basically saying, oh, you're nitpicking. And I'm like, I'm not nitpicking, right? I said, they could be anywhere. They didn't have to be at Earth, right? And then um, 
he says, well, like, why do you have a big problem with that? And I was like, if you're watching a movie and they're in a car chase in New York City, and then all of a sudden they're in Tokyo, you'd be yeah. like, this is dumb and makes no sense. That's how I look at it, right? So, yeah. Even watching like a show like in Mr. Robot, there was in the fourth season, there's like a, a scene where he's running all around um, the city, like get to go away from some cops. Mm -hmm. And and the, I was listening to podcasts. They kept calling it the Canadian New York of it all, where like he ran from like um, Midtown to yeah. like the, to like the South End in like two minutes. Like it was just so, so. So, yeah, like when you have a familiarity with this universe or the geography of a place or anything like that. I think you need to try to stay consistent. Now, uh, it is consistent with like that Sakari technology that you could go forty thousand light years because that was no, the whole, no, that's fine. That was the whole Voyager thing. Mm -hmm. But like um, Rio's ship only has warp drive, so it can only go so or so fast. Mm -hmm. So even if even if Riker went a thousand or sorry, if Picard had went a thousand light years away, that would take them probably a year to get there. So we'll see what, interesting. See what happens next week. Yeah. I, you know what, and I'll and I'll give you some poetic license on that. Like when you when you watch like anything in in the past, like when they're you know uh, like the Excelsior going to save the Enterprise in you know Star Trek Six, right? When they're like, oh, we're here, but now we have to get there, and like they're traversing like these vast swaths of distance in like no time, like several days at mount at most, right? So you're like, okay, well. Like, I can kind of buy it, but when they, like, just vastly go the other way or one way or the other, I'm like, that makes no sense. Well, it's one of the things I've, I've liked about Star Trek is that they have, like, sort of a geography to the galaxy, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, and unlike Star Wars, where Star Wars, they can just seem to hyperspace themselves anywhere or anytime they want to go, wherever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. might as well just be all right next to each other. Yeah, that Star Trek kind of didn't do that as much, like, that there was sort of... Science versus, science versus fantasy. Right. And then, yeah. yeah, and we'll throw a wormhole in here to help, like, go to new places or whatever. Um, or, you know, the, the Borg have trans warp. There's been different things that they've introduced that will allow you to go around. But Here's, here's an interesting um, perspective um, or a question, rather. Um, mm -hmm. When Janeway destroys the caretaker array in Voyager, she knows where the wormhole is. To Deep Space Nine. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't she go for the wormhole in the Gamma Quadrant? I, I watched a video on this recently, actually, that was really interesting. Um, because they said that technically speaking, it would have been only 60 years to get to the to get to the the wormhole in the gamma quadrant mm -hmm. versus 70 years to get uh, to the alpha quadrant. So they, they they said, well, they knew they already knew about the wormhole. This would have made more sense, but I think that what's kind of postulated is that um, they don't really know. They they ha they have a better idea what they're going to run into going that way, even though they won't know what they're going through the Delta Quadrant. But I, as they get to the Beta Quadrant and further, they're going to have a better sense of where they're going. Hmm. So they chose the Borg route. Like... Well, they don't know. They don't know really no. where the Borg are. They don't really know. Okay. Yeah. They don't. They don't know anything. So like, it's kind of like, is it the devil you know or the devil you don't? with because basically it was like they they were oh i think at that point they would have been aware or she would probably had like reports on the dominion very little though it was very like, very little just been introduced um, yeah so like maybe the um the odyssey was destroyed is probably like the max that she would know and like that that would be about it hmm. if she even knew that I, I, I would imagine Janeway would know that, but I remember when uh, even when when Chakotay was telling uh, Bolana Torres about the war because they get the news that the Maquis have been wiped out by the Dominion, and that um, he's like, yeah, the Cardassians made some kind of new friend from the from the Gamma Quadrant, and it, it, so it's clear that like at least Ch Chakotay and Bolana Torres don't have a much of a knowledge of the Dominion at that time when they were um, swept away. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like they, so there would have been some, they would have knew a little bit about the Dominion, but not very much. I but think, yeah. They, so yeah, they could have gone that way for sure. Um, and then it, it basically turns into like, is it pragmatism or is it just storytelling where it's just like, I want to keep your story separate? Like, and that's it. Was, it was good. And the thing with like, if you remember the Equinox, which is that other ship they run into on Voyager, um, they never even ran into the Borg at all in their whole times. So how did the Equinox end up there? Same, same, way, same way, same way, same way. The caretaker. caretaker did it? Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember that. Yeah, but 
Hmm. Yeah, they went down a bad road that equinox. Yeah, what well, <laughs> crew? Yeah, well, we can talk all about that. Like, I, I, I've often there's often been like inconsistencies in the caretakers array and a number of things. Um, because even the fact that Janeway was the one who destroyed it, like there were other ships that were brought there, mm. like the Equinox, yeah, right. and they just kind of went home. They didn't try to use the caretakers array to go home or anything like that. So it's kind of a, there's a lot of inconsistencies there, but anyway, uh, why couldn't Elmer go with them? I guess so that um, I guess that after reading this summary for the next episode, I think it has to be because um, we need somebody to be teamed up with Hugh because it seems like Hugh might be in trouble now. Yeah, and yeah. maybe maybe so maybe Elnor is needed to sort of be there, and they're gonna we're gonna stick with the the artifact. And they're 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 going after Soji. The, uh, the sister and Narek that are going to be chasing. I think that's what I got from the preview is that they're... they're Do they even care at this point, though, about her? Like, if they can find the planet and destroy mm -hmm. it or do whatever, destroy whatever's there, like, do they really care about her at the end of it? I think they will. It's just... Being at the end of it, it'll be a loose end, but, like, they might just go, like, screw this, I'll deal, deal with you later. They want to kill all the synthetics. Right. But... I, I guess maybe you could be like, oh, well, sh she holds the key to, like, replicating it. And, like, we need to take care of her. But, like, what's what's the, the bigger priority? Is it the, you know, the Western Front or the Eastern Front? Like, uh, what do you do? Right. Yeah, I guess so. Like, I don't know. I, I hope they take... I, I'm, I'm sick of these Romulans doing all this, like, <laughs> you know, being bad guys all the time. Well, they're not. Now they're at least giving you some, like, decent... We got Elmore. Uh, he's our good, he, but he, he's a dumb Romulan. He's a good dumb Romulan. He's a naive he's a, Romulan. He's a, he's a, he's a monk. Yeah, like he's. Oh, we've, we've got the Tal Shiar uh, people that back at Picard's Vineyard. It seems like everybody's a Tal Shiar. Like, just like, hi, welcome to the, the land of Romulus. 50% uh, uh, of us are Tal Shiar. The other 40 are military. And we have 10% civilian population. And we got, we got some, um, some nuns, nuns. Who, who will cut your head yeah. off. You know, if you will tell you the truth, I'm like, hey, how you doing? You're ugly. Gotta go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm ex so if it is Riker next week, though, I'm excited for that. Like, uh, is that's a we haven't had a really a TNG reunion except for like the the dream sequences with Brent Spiner, mm -hmm. but that's the you know, I think we've been looking forward to that all. Oh, yeah. But even if he is out of Starfleet, it seems to be. Yeah, he seems to be retired. So, like, if he's like you wouldn't think like he would be out too, mm -hmm. you know. Well, how old is how old is Riker at this point? Um, he would be like he should be like his like best of both worlds age. Now, uh, granted, he, he, in that in that reality, like he had, um, he had no Deanna Troy, so he probably would have just said, "Hey, I'm just going to devote my life to service." So. Uh, Riker's born in 2335, so that would put him around um, 65, 64, something like that at this point. Oh. So he's in his golden years. He's 6'4. I just noticed how red that. I didn't know he was that tall. Riker? Yeah. Yeah. He's a tall man. Why does the tall man have a furry face? As D4 asked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's how he's able to do the Riker maneuver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's able to go over those big long legs. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> Um, and he's apparently a father now. We're gonna see. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, well, yeah. We saw this in like the the the, the, the preview previews that um, he's yelling at his he's yelling at daughter. Kid to stop yelling. Who's yeah. Who's kid with Troy. Troy. Presumably. Yeah. I assume she's she's back for this episode. Right? She's in it. She's in it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, yeah. I'm kind of so like at least we're getting that. Um, Frakes has already directed like a couple of episodes this season. He's apparently not directing this next episode that he's in, which is interesting. Well, it's probably just more work. Like they, they don't want you to do that, probably. But um, uh, what would be, you know, what if if I were the creator of the show, if I was like a Kurtzman or whoever, what I would do is I go like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, and and do it totally in secret, so nobody knows anything. I wouldn't. I do it at like his house, and I'd go over to like Michael Dorn's house, and I'd be like, all right. We're doing you up. We're putting you on a green screen, and you're only going to have like essentially that. You're only going to talk through a view screen, 
and you're like essentially you are the guy who was tasked to go find uh Picard or whoever, or whatever, like, and then just like you decide to like not do it, like just as a pure cameo, but like totally in secret, like so like it wouldn't get leaked whatsoever. I don't know. I like, think that would be real. Like, like other than having Dorn, like more. Like if they said Worf after Picard, that would be amazing. Yeah. I would love right? that. Oh, and yeah. then like then he just like decides to like buzz off, like just like just like a quick thing, right? Right. Um, or if it was like Jordy LaForge, like he was chasing Harry oh, yeah. and Chicote on the yeah, chow. Similar uh, to that, but like on, just do it with like Worf on the Enterprise. You have all the models, just like pre-render the sequence, do it all behind closed doors. Nobody knows what the hell's going on. Right. And like because I feel like that would leak, right? In some way, shape, or form. Like, because they'd be like, Oh, it's so and so was down at, you know, the CBS lot. And like da 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 da. And uh which they I mean, I think the, I think he did show up at one point on the CBS lot, but I, everybody kind of like alluded that it was just like, oh, you it was Michael Dorn. Yeah, yeah, just there to kind of like say hello, kind of like. But who knows? Maybe. Maybe we'll get more. I would like it. Worf's one of my favorites. Um, so especially if he was Captain Worf. I don't. You don't want it, but I want it. Well, it's kind of like me, like the Bajorans. Like I get tired of the whole Klingon honor stuff and. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I well, yeah, I but you could make the same argument against the Federation for like being goody two shoes half the yeah. time, you know. Like there's there's good and bad in everything, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, well, that's been one of the big criticisms of this show is that they're destroying the utopia that Gene Roddenberry created. Yeah, but you know, like that's such a ridiculous argument because humans are messy. Mm -hmm. Like, you're you're not gonna have like. A perfect utopia like where every like you can get rid of problems you can get rid of like poverty you can get rid of crime for the most part but there's still going to be crap and there's still going to be interpersonal issues like even you look at just today right you look at today and you look at kids who have everything they're still depressed they're still you know have their social issues they have all sorts of problems but they're just different so like to say that they're all gone in the future is wishful thinking I think. Right. Yeah. And maybe people want to hear that. And they just, and, and I've heard people say, yeah, I just want to hear that. I want to have the hope. Right. And I'm like, okay, but you're hoping for like the perfect thing, which is unrealistic. You're living in your own fantasy world, which if that helps you, that's fine. But you yourself are looking for this as an outlet for your own crap to kind of like, to, to not think about it. As yeah. a human. So, like, you're basically, I don't know, proving my point by saying, like, I need this because my life has its own issues, so I need to think about something that, that is is happier, right? Well, I think that, like, yeah, like, the, the whole, the vision of Star Trek was largely, like, that we had, we had moved beyond our petty differences, um, and that's what Gene Roddenberry was always trying to infuse, and his writing team was always pushing back, saying, um, storytelling without conflict is, is not interesting, right? Well, so. that's like, uh, I was just hearing about Sting not giving uh, any money to his kid because he wants his children to, you want the struggle in life. Like, you don't want to be given everything to have no struggle to find food. Yeah, they won't be walking in the fields of gold. No, no, they don't. He's not, he's not <laughs> giving any of his fortune. <laughs> but like, yeah, because the struggle is, that's what humanity is about, is struggling and conflict and, you know, that. Makes a lot sense. of a lot of like billionaires like have like Bill Gates has behaved like that, mm -hmm. where he says like I'm going to give you like a trust fund of like X, yeah, mm -hmm. but not which you're, you're still a trust fund baby, but like I'm not giving you my 95 billion dollars. Like, you still gotta make a living. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta yeah. I mean, technically, they wouldn't have to make a living, but the irony is, is that you just you're not inheriting my entire wealth, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm I'm gonna do something better than just like make you have. You know, like a golden toilet. Like it's yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you get that. Yeah, yeah. But so, like, um, I think that you can have this stuff in Star Trek for sure. But I think like the fact that Starfleet is now seemingly evil and that the that the galaxy is the Wild West at the moment. I don't even think that they're painting them as evil. I think they're painting them as like as basically as pragmatists. Yeah. Like they're 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 willing to do the wrong thing as long as it 
serves a greater good. As it serves a greater good or helps them. Um, like, and, and not even necessarily the greater good, because the greater good would have been, okay, you know, we're going to uh, figure it out and we're going to make sacrifices to help our our enemy, essentially. Like, you know, be like, it'd be like the U.S. helping the Russians if, like, a volcano was going to go off in Moscow. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, we need to evacuate people. And it's like, eh, do we, like, is it really our problem? Like, well, well it's or, our, more, our morality says it's our problem. Yeah, right. and that they were at first, like, what I understand from this um, this prequel book that's come out in the comic books is that, like, the Federation initially, they're like, okay, Picard, yes, we're going to help. And then the Romulans weren't being very cooperative. The Romulans wouldn't let any ships into their territory that had any kind of weaponry. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the reason they had to build these other ships. Right. Um, and and Geordi was tasked with that. But at some point, um, I guess, well, it's after the Mars attack, I suppose, that... They were like, uh, the, the Romans can go to hell. We don't mm -hmm. care. Um, they, they had their, we tried to help them and they wouldn't let us. So, and now this has happened. Yeah. So, uh, but, could, yeah, like, and we, again, we talked about this the other day, which was the Romulans are not an incapable species, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> they have ships. I want to say money. Yeah. But like to do, to f solve these problems. But like, they have warships they have they can build their own ships they can do all these things on their own they're not like they're not like for lack of a better term like like rwandans like like that can't that are don't have an industrialized society that can't just like okay we need to solve this problem right they have they can solve this problem but i i assume i know that it's like it's a big endeavor but like so how many that that's really the big question is like of the the population of romulans how many people did survive Right, like how many like they they loot they they talk about the ten thousand people on that one colony, but like what what is that number? Like how many people? They have so many ships. I think they would say there was like ninety million Romulans they were trying to save, mm -hmm. which seems like a low number actually. They uh, said nine hundred million on Romulus. I think nine hundred million. Okay, that's what it was. But even yeah. that's just under a billion, right? Um, yeah. And well, like, and what's Earth, what's interesting billion. about that? What's interesting about that is that. Because like when did the the Vulcan Romulan split happen? It's like it's never given a specific year. It's it's implied to be like many centuries before the events of the show. Again. So like in many centuries, could you go from whatever that amount? Like what was the original core of those those Romulan people? Like let's call it ten million people or whatever it was. Would yeah. that ten million over three centuries turn into nine hundred million? Oh, at least yeah, yeah. Like, like, um, as I remember that one episode of Deep Space Nine where um, the Defiant crashed, like, in the past, and then, like, so, like, 80 people um, that were on the Defiant, like, you, it was two centuries later, I think, were now, like, I think it was, like, 5,000 people or something had, turned, had, had like, had, um, had enough, after a few generations, had expanded wildly. Even Earth, weren't we just, like, 1 billion... 50, 60 years ago, now we're five billion. Yeah, like, now we're, we're seven and a half almost. But, half. Uh, I, I'm trying to think when we were one billion. I'm sure you could look that up quick. Yeah. Even let's say it's nine hundred million people you're trying to ferry out of um, out of that system or out of Romulus. Uh, they only got a small percentage of that. A billion people in eighteen oh four. Eighteen oh four was a billion, and now we're at seven. Yeah, so two hundred fifteen years later, we're at seven. Maybe maybe less of Romulus is habitable. Maybe that's part of it or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, it seems low. It seems like a low number, and even that wasn't really saved. So I'm kind of interested to see more about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm also kind of I'm kind of interested to see what the what the Klingons thought about all this um, because the Klingons, you know, not best friends with the Romulans, and um, but the but they are best friends with the Federation. So if the Federation was helping them, and are they best friends or just friends? I think they're just friends. Well, I thought they were best friends. How much have we heard about the Klingons? Not uh, and Picard? Zero. 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 Zip. They have not Zip. been mentioned at all. We have nothing. No, nothing. I think it's because they don't know what to do with them, how they look. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> Discovery. Oh, Lord. Uh, like, what a blunder that was. Oh. Like, well, you didn't need to do that. Like, just keep them the same. Yeah. yeah. More than so that what they did with their face, I hated what they did with like their hands, giving them like the claws and all that. And um, yeah. I don't know. Rob, Klingons don't have talons and like, and they're, they're not gargoyles. Uh, yeah, they look like monsters. And I'm just like, 
<laughs> no. Like, you've already established that there's a reason why there's, like, continuity between races. Right. Like, in the chase, right? Like, that you, you, they talk about, like, how, like, all these races were seeded. And, like, okay, great. Like, there's actually some kind of, like, continuity, and it makes sense why it's like, why does everyone look kind of like human, but just a little nice. bit different? You know? Yeah, well, they explain that, too. You can also just the idea of, like, um, what's that concept parallel evolution that species will just evolve into similar things? Like, like, um, an ex- the, the laws of physics, like, like, like yeah, yeah, like an yeah. example, like, it, it, like, um, a hyena, for instance, is, is actually related to the cat family, but they, they, they resemble a dog more because they have evolved, they've evolved, they've evolved those same, um, attributes as dogs have because they're same thing with, uh, needed it a cheetah i think yeah i'm pretty sure it's a cheetah like if you look at a cheetah um their paws are uh are, are, are more similar to a dog's paws right and so the whole point is like yeah like it's not it's not without possibility that there would be species with two arms two legs and mm-hmm. similar attributes to us that would evolve on other planets it's not impossible mm-hmm. would it happen at this frequency probably not but you know it's mm-hmm. um but who's to say? Like yeah. we can't. We, we don't know. But Star Trek has Star Trek has established, established so, the, the, that that old that species seeded old planets. Right. But I hadn't thought of that. That yeah. That they kind of really dug themselves into a hole with the Klingon look on Discovery, and they were saying this is what the Klingons look like now. Can you imagine that they brought Worf back, and he had to look like that. <laughs> they said if they did bring him back, they were like, well, no, he's going to be Worf. Like you, you, you they're not going to retcon him. Oh my god! Could you imagine? To be like that, that to have no on. fingers, like you know, that he's gonna have these. No, if they wreck on him, like there would be like <laughs> protests in the street. Right. Yeah, if they put him in that crazy makeup, oh mm-hmm. man! <laughs> like they were, they used to make fun of his makeup, like it looked like he had a turtle on his head or whatever. But you know, I was fine with the way Worf looked. Mm-hmm. No, he looks fine. The Klingons had a look. Yeah. It was fine. You know what? It, it, made, it made sense. Like, okay, if you look from like TOS into TNG, like I could see people going like, well, why do they look so different now? Well, you could just make the argument, well, okay, the makeup got better. But I think that they use that same argument from TNG okay. to Discovery or whatever, all the, basically everything to Discovery. And then they just go like, well, the makeup's better, so let's just make them look better. I'm like, okay. No, like you went you don't too need far to. into the paint. Like they, they didn't like feel the need to do that with the Vulcans and Romulans. Like we're gonna give them even pointier ears or uh, well, they kind of did that with the Romulans with the ridges and all that. Like the kind of the but they always had that. That was always there. Like some Romulans have that. Some Romulans. I mean, don't. but basically every Romulan looked the exact same. Like they were like basically this kind of green skin pointy ear with a bowl cut. Like and it was just they like all had a bowl cut. Everyone yeah. had a full cut. They only had some. But now they're cut. like, they look like just normal folks with like, though they might have like a, a, a raised forehead or like, and pointing your different kind of styles of ears. But like, you know, uh, that, that's just a budgetary thing, in my opinion. Like, yeah. You know. Like, but the, you don't know, like when they brought, even with the, um, they, they did it a bit with the Tellarites in Discovery 2. They kind of, they updated their makeup a bit, uh, which I was fine with that because Tellarites, whatever. I think, I think the difference is, is between refinement and totally going off the deep yeah. end. Well, what they did with the Klingons was too far. Uh, they took it too yeah. far and, and they thought that the fans. They're like, you don't have any hair anymore. It's like, what? And then they're like, wait, we made a mistake. Give them hair again. Yeah, yeah. But they, they were just not growing their hair because it was wartime. Well, that's and weird. Like, that's it the wasn't more time in that first episode, uh, yeah. was, you know. So it was kind of dumb, um, and and they got to walk that. They got to walk that back, you know. They basically, just got to go. Discovery was a mistake. I'm interested <laughs> what they do with like the third season because it actually. Me they, too. I'm kind of interested to see like they're going to the 32nd century, I think, mm-hmm. right? And so then yeah. the Federation is sort of a relic at this point. Maybe it's barely holding on. Um, that's kind of interesting. Like yeah. they've they've pitched that idea many different ways over the years. I think Brian Singer was one who was trying to make a show like that for yeah. a while. Yeah. Star Trek Federation. Yeah. Um, so they're kind of taking some of those elements and putting them in here. So we'll see. When's when's it coming back? I think well, they haven't said. They pushing it's, it. It's wrapped. Like they've finished. Yeah. They've, they've, they've done the whole season. Uh, but it's. I, I think they'll bring it back after Picard's after done. Picard's, yeah. Or or yeah. Well, definitely after Picard's. And Picard's have four more weeks left. Yeah, well, they're not going to have them like cross over. Like they're not going to run the no. time, um, even though they could. 
uh, it was why bother, right? Like if you're going to keep subscribers on, but they have to. So I don't know. We'll see about discovery. If discovery gets, can, can rebound on the third season. I hope they do. I hope they do. Um, because I think them going to the future, them not messing with the past and like yeah. in our established timeline any more than they did. Yeah, like, like uh, you know, what go to the that, future like, where you don't have to, you it won't matter. Uh, what, what a bad choice. If I'm like those guys, like who are choosing, like okay, we we got to make a new Star Trek show. What are we gonna do? Well, let's set it before Kirk, because then we won't run into any kind of like this continuity crap, right? Mm -hmm. and it's just like, but you absolutely do. Yeah. And it's absolutely a pain in your ass. And <laughs> I think I, I think that some twisted logic was, yeah, that um, that if we set this before TNG and all those shows, we don't have to adhere to as much of like their established things. But you do. Um, but you, yeah, exactly, you do. But it's just like we're gonna have a spore drive, and I'm like, what <laughs> is that? Like, it's just like, oh, I know, we use mushrooms to go through the galaxy. And I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> like a, an, like a like a psilocybin trip? Like what are you talking about? <laughs> right? And then they're like, no, no, no. We just have them in canisters and we plug them in and then we go, whoa, whoa, boom. <laughs> and, like, and nobody knows anything about this ship. It's like we were very important in the war. It's like, yeah, nobody ever talked about you. This giant thing that could get you to go from one end of the galaxy to the other. Oh yeah, that's not gonna break anything. Like, what is uh <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't love that either. Um and Spock's sister. And yeah, I will make her Spock's <laughs> sister for some reason. And yeah, like I, you know what? I can at least stomach that to a certain extent. I was kind of like, okay, but like, what? Why? I don't know. Yeah. So so anyway, we're hoping we're hoping Discovery maybe can find a new. Um... I will say this: what I did like about Discovery, and this is more of like, and which I'm I'm generally against this kind of crap, but like the PC kind of crap but like mm -hmm. the 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 ship that she starts on the shenzhou right yeah mm -hmm. like i'm like yeah what like why don't you have more um you know different cultured names like right. they like within like you know in and why don't you have vulcan names why don't you have you know, there have been a few ships that have been like mentioned or talked about on, that have a Vulcan name. Like I think there was like the Tepring was one, but very few. Most of the ship names are like Challenger, because Odyssey, um, Crazy like, Horse, Crazy Horse, like Americanized friendly. Yeah, name. and yeah, so they've started to do a little bit more of that. Like there, there might be a ship called the Shenzhou, or I think there was maybe one other example, even in Picard that they mentioned uh, that had a different kind, like a name from a different culture, but. Even like, yeah, some would be, you'd have more diversity on Earth. You could have like ships named after all kinds of words um, and, and and Vulcan and Andorian stuff too. Mm -hmm. I But then you also look at a lot of those names and it's a lot of like, um, like the Farragut and like the Hood and like all these ones, like they're all like U.S. military, right? Or like military, yeah. British military, like famous ships. Um, and, and maybe that ha just has something to go to speak that, you know, the Chinese Navy, like, isn't as prominent or wasn't as prominent. It probably is more today. Yeah. But, like... Um, but they're named after famous yeah. ships from history. Yeah. History. And, yeah, so they're, like, and I guess... I imagine there are ships from all over the world. I guess, yeah, the British had a strong Navy, the Americans, the French. The Russians. The Spanish. And so, and we have this new ship. Oh, yeah, it's La Serena, right? Like, the, 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 the mermaid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the merman. Movie. The merman. Rios is a merman. The merman. Yeah. That he is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anything else we want to uh, cover on this one? I think we've uh, we, we've been going for a good uh, while now. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. yeah. So hey, look, looking ahead to next week. Um, what's it called? Nepenthe. The Nepenthe. Nepenthe. We're, we're getting Riker back. That's going to be exciting. I'm excited to talk about that. Um, make sure to leave comments, likes, and subscribes, and all that kind of stuff um, in our YouTube and Facebook feeds. Uh, we need uh, we, we need viewers, and we like having you here. So uh, thanks for mm -hmm. listening in. Uh, you can also listen to us um, the audio version over on Anchor. Uh, you can um, you can also uh, just uh, take the RSS feed from our YouTube or Facebook page if you want to um, uh, put that into your uh, podcast feed. And uh, and that's it. Rich, thank you for joining yeah. us. We're we're hoping to have you back very yeah. soon. 
Yeah. Uh, it's been great having a whole host of um, panelists this season. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming in. And Jane, thanks for coming no over to my, to my desk uh, and being the... Uh... Thanks for allowing me to share your screen. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Well, it wasn't easy, but, I, you know, I... <laughs> my head takes up most of it most of the time, as you can see. Yeah. All right, everybody. Uh, we'll catch you next time. See you on the flip side. Bye. Bye.